Welcome to Thinking Particles 6.4. In this feature video, we will discuss the new functions we have added to subscription drop 4 of Thinking Particles. We will talk especially about the new viscoelastic solver we have added. Thinking Particles uses a spring based viscoelastic fluid solver. It's purely particle based and you can create all kinds of viscoelastic material. Could be rubber like, very thick fluid like oil or honey, and you can even use it to melt objects. All this is done based on particles only with a very stable and fast viscoelastic fluid solver. You can even turn the stability of the viscoelastic fluid to near rigid body dynamics. What you see here right now is a viscoelastic object stacking on each other, sticking to each other, and that is really stable. And you won't find many products on the market that can do that with a particle-based fluid solver. You can also turn the viscoelasticity very soft so you get this gelatin-like material behavior. Another interesting feature is because it's particle based, you can create a constant flow of these gelatinous materials. All this is achieved very fast and easy in thinking particles. Before we dive in, let's have a look at the scene setup we are using here for our viscoelastic effects. Let me bring up the Thinking Particles user interface first. Here in our first setup, we will talk a little bit about how we create these particles, these cubes falling down. We are using a time interval to start all of our dynamic set. Then we have an egg timer connected and in subscription drop 4, we have a new feature added to the egg timer that allows you to keep the reach status whenever the status was reached. So with an OR operator, we are now able to create an object right at the beginning at frame 1. And then because we checked the loop option, we will be able to have every 20 frames a new object. And we are setting it with a volume position and we create every 20 frames a cube that is falling down from the sky. A very simple but efficient oscillator setup that gives you constant every 20 frames an uh, event to trigger the particle creation. The gravity manages to get the cubes down and we have our flow set up as well as our surface is created with our implicit shape. Let's check the scene, how it looks like and how it behaves. For a viscoelastic solver, Thinking Particles is offering one of the fastest solutions. What you see here is real time. So everything you see here is calculated on the fly it's the surfacing, the fluid simulation, and we will be able to adjust parameters just as we go with our scene. This gives you a lot of power and flexibility to create your visual effects. As you see here, we create every 20 frames a new cube. These cubes look like they were soft bodies, but they aren't. It's actually a fluid simulation. And this is what you need to keep in mind when you see that here. We are using our new viscoelastic fluid solver that can be chosen from the menu. All the features you see here are still relevant and work. So all the fluid options like viscosity and all this is working. But the most important part is down here where we control our spring-based viscoelastic fluid solver. And we are going to explore some of the features. There's a lot of complexity going on if you take the normal fluid uh, settings as well. But as you can see, the cubes are bouncing really soft and light uh, when they hit each other. And we are going to adjust some settings. The spring-based fluid solver gives you the advantage that we can control the uh, stiffness push and the stiffness pull value 
individually. So let me turn those to a much lower value, let's say 0.2. And when you now check the animation, and we can do that in real time, you see the cubes compress much more dramatic. They flatten out and then bounce back. So a totally different result. And the great thing is push and pull can be individually set. So we can have a higher push and a lower pull value. And you see it's now much more um, springy. It compresses faster, but it gets returns to its initial shape also much faster. Stiffness, pull and push are very powerful features. The next value we are going to explore is the velocity stickiness. Velocity stickiness allows you to control the stickiness of two fluids when they collide with each other. The more sticky they are, the more interaction they will show. In this animation, you can see now that the cubes are sticking to each other and they are able to drag each other away all over the place. This also is a very powerful feature and allows you for many creative effects. Let me turn this back to the original value. Now we have the bouncing cubes again with no stickiness. The next parameter is also one of the most powerful parameters here to simulate fluids like uh, dough or dough-like material. You can see here when the first cube fell down, it was squished like dough when you throw it on a plane and they compress really nice and they keep their deformed or compressed shape. This is controlled with a threshold so you can decide on your own when this should happen. How much force do you need to get the viscoelastic effect? Viscoelastic materials are purely based on the impulses they receive. The stronger the impulse, the harder they appear. If we reduce the threshold, we get a much softer like behavior. It's more like dough and you have full control over this effect in detail by using this parameter. Let me turn back to the default value. Now we have the soft body like animation. Next on our list is the density plasticity. This parameter gives you a lot of creative control over the viscoelastic effect. This is a purely pressure based effect. Right now the cubes are falling down and they are squished and they melt into each other. The higher the pressure, the more they liquefy. So this is a purely pressure based liquefaction process. This is also dependent on a threshold value and the threshold actually decides how much pressure you need to liquefy the fluid. Here we have a quite high value, so it liquefies or it needs more pressure to liquefy the fluid. The next value to control the viscoelasticity of the fluid is the diffluence. Diffluence is a factor that is time-based and it just decides how much time it needs to become a fluid again. The higher this value, the faster it will turn into a real fluid-like state. And remember, diffluence is a time-based effect. It has nothing to do with pressure or anything. Let me put this to a pretty high value. And you can see here, it already starts liquefying while in air. And when it splashes onto the ground, it looks more like a low viscosity fluid. And this is exactly what the diffluence parameter does. Next in the list of parameters we want to look at is the tearing length. In a spring-based viscoelastic system, the length of the springs define the rigidity of your fluid. This tearing length value sets a cutoff length for the springs. Here in this example, we can see that the lower cube is squished and it's torn apart. When we reduce it even more, even the impact is enough or the stretching of the impact to tear the cube apart. Now, when there are more cubes falling on top, more and more of these original cubes that are below 
are torn apart. This is a very powerful feature to control how the viscoelastic object should behave. When I turn this back to a tearing length of one, we come back to our soft body-like behavior. That's about it. Thank you for watching this video.